Good evening, class. Tonight we're going to talk about those videos you saw last week. Uh, there were three of them. The first one was, I'll do the one, that, the longest one first. This was very interesting. It was a 22-minute uh, video, and it was about a double or two-way clean-out outside. Now, what I'd like to do is point out a few things that uh, the narrator covered. He obviously had been a very experienced guy. And I thought he was very fussy in his uh, work practices. Uh, he used that cleaner, that dye cleaner, which some of you are familiar with. And he didn't let it run down the pipe. He's good. He's very good. Uh, to do that, the only way you can get it from running, not running, is to tilt the pipe slightly, and the fitting, slightly downhill. Okay? If you keep it uh, pitched up a bit, it's going to run right down the pipe. And you can't, you can't get it off. Uh, he was also fussy about uh, cleaning, deburring uh, the pipe, and the way he cut it, uh, not the safest way. If, the, if that saw had jumped, he could have cut his hand. Not, I don't know that he'd have to have stitches, but he certainly would have cut himself. Uh, if you're going to cut it freehand like that rather than uh, like a chop saw, I'd recommend that you have it like a, some kind of saw horse set up where you can put your foot on it and hold the hold the saw with two hands he did it with one hand and he was very good he didn't uh he cut it very straight uh a few things that i noticed he did not use a slip coupling he used a clamp very clever uh technically that clamp should have been approved for use underground now one thing i noticed didn't take i didn't spot it right away it took me a few minutes and i realized he's using a three inch pipe now if this was a class, I'd ask the question, if, what's wrong with that? The problem is he's outside. That means this is the building drain passing under or through, th through or under the wall. And uh, he's already through the wall. That means it has to be four inch. It cannot come out the wall three inch. There's no way. And it was three inch pipe. I looked close. He didn't, I don't know that he said that, but uh, that's three inch pipe. It obviously is not an approved a method in Massachusetts. Some states would be fine. And the surprising thing is a lot of states do not even have a code. But our code does require that to have been four inch. And one reason I'm mentioning that is a slip coupling four inch is very risky. Anybody here has tried even a three inch slip coupling. You can slide it one way, but when you try to slide it back, it doesn't always go. It's always good to have a block of wood and a, uh, a heavy hammer. Uh, to help it along and always pencil mark it if you're going to use a slip coupling so that you know that it's covering uh half of the pipe on each each side of the uh of the joint uh otherwise like i said the guy was good he was uh neat and it was a very interesting two-way uh clean out i've never seen that before and maybe that's something popular where this video was made uh if you have any questions on that video, would you hold them? And when we have our, uh, our live segment, uh, we could talk about it then. Okay, now the other uh, video, one of the other ones, was the uh, P-trap that replaced a drum trap. Uh, now this is the one I believe with the uh, galvanized pipe and it rotted out. Uh, Galvanize, and I believe this is the video where they mentioned, I actually watched two videos. Well, I think I must have somehow ended up with an extra video. But in any case, uh, he went from a drum trap to a P-trap. Is that a good idea? Okay, the answer obviously is no, because somebody used a drum trap because it's not vented, right? That's why you use a drum trap. No other reason. Now, the way the drum trap works, some of you know this, especially if uh, you were with me last year. The drum trap has a body which is much bigger than the pipe itself. In fact, a three inch PVC drum trap measures three by six by inch and a half. So it's six inches high, three inches in diameter. So it's like a three inch pipe, right? And the pipe coming in is inch and a half. Okay, so that the body of water is really big. It's not going to siphon. Okay, because that drum trap has so much water in it, the chances of it siphoning out like a P-trap can, if it's not vented properly, are pretty slim. So he went from a drum trap back to a P-trap. Now, if it's not going to be inspected, your business. 
but normally I think most of you or your bosses would probably have used another drum trap, in this case PVC, which would have been roughly the same dimensions as the trap you took out. Okay. Um, now, one thing about that particular video, he used wicking. My guess is that none of you have seen this, unless you've got a boss that's my age or older, which I doubt. Uh, wicking is something we did 50 years ago. All right, my father loved wicking. He would put his he would put a piece of string with his finger and wind it so fast and without going like without messing up on the threads. I got pretty good at it, not not like him. And uh, then we put piped up over it. Uh, the same direction as the threads were going, you know, when you put the, when you tighten it up and uh, never had any leaks, but Teflon kind of took over and uh, piped dope. In fact, my uncle was the one that showed me, he always used Teflon and piped dope. The only problem with Teflon, and you all know this, it never really makes up tight. It just keeps on wanting to turn because Teflon is, is really a lubricant. Uh, a couple of things about that four minute quick video. The main thing was that he replaced a drum trap with a P trap and it looked like some kind of uh, pipe coming in the side there. He didn't talk about it, but in any case, I'm sure that line was not vented. Uh, oh, that was the one where he replaced it, but I wasn't sure why he replaced it. It was another video I saw, another four inch video, a four minute video where they replaced it because the pipe going into the trap was leaking and it was galvanized and he happened to mention that it was galvanized. This one here, I'm not sure why they replaced it. Okay, the last uh, video, another brief one, just a quick one, was just the four minute house trap removal. At first, I, when I saw the video, I said, oh, wait a minute, they're replacing a house trap with a house trap. No, they're not. They just took a house trap out. And it was a pretty good video. Uh, a couple of things about a house trap. Some of you know this. The house trap is unnecessary. It was, it was like an overkill. It was originally done back, I guess, in the 1800s and up into the probably uh, 1950 or so in Massachusetts. Because my father's house had a house trap. It was actually 1949, and I was on the outside. Uh, but you didn't need it because all the fixtures in the house are trapped. And then the stack goes out the roof, vents to the atmosphere. So you don't need the house trap. It's like overkill. So the house trap now is not only unnecessary, it's illegal. You can leave it. And you can snake it out if it has roots in it or whatever. But uh, the best thing is exactly what this guy did in the video. Take it out. You know, put, uh, put a clean out there. And he used, uh, you know, some clamps. And uh, that's it. Now, one thing real quick on that. The uh, clamps that he used, he mentioned about the diameter being a little different. And uh, that's it. He just mentioned it. Now, here's something to keep in mind. The smallest diameter pipe that you'll be working with is service weight. The next one up is no hook, right? When you join them together, the heaviest or the thickest or the most diameter, biggest diameter is extra heavy. So if you're going from no hub to extra heavy, the no hub is going to be bigger. You put the clamps on and it squashes the, uh, that, that uh, stainless steel band and it doesn't look good. And uh, one way to solve that, I think I mentioned, I don't think I mentioned it this year, is to get a piece of like rainbow packing, the stuff you make gaskets out of, and cut a, uh, a strip so that you can put it around the band. In other words, it'll fatten the band out, just the thickness of that rubber. That's all you need, right? <clears throat> and you can seal it where those two pieces touch. You could put a little sealant there, a little pipe dope or something. Uh, I've never seen it leak, but you could put it there just in case. All right, and usually that'll equalize the diameter of the two pipes and it won't look uh, kind of like a, a kind of messy where one side is squished. If you've ever seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's very noticeable. Now going the other way, no hub to extra heavy. It actually, the no hub now is the small side. Do the same thing, except put the red rubber on the no hub side to fatten that out to equal up extra heavy. Okay, little trick. Um, you aren't going to read it anywhere, but it's something uh, I discovered or maybe I was shown that, I'm not sure, many years ago. Okay, the, um, the clamps um, appear to be uh, legitimate clamps. The only clamp I had a question on, going back to that first video, was that underground clamp. I don't know that he mentioned it, but be sure that you have an approved underground clamp in case you're going to have an inspection. 
Remember, when you do something like that, you're out of somebody's front lawn. It's probably in the city, right, where they had the uh, under, uh, piping, uh, what do you call it, uh, city sewer. So you're close to the street. You're very, very, what I'm getting at is you're very visible. A good, uh, a good job to get a, you should get a permit for all the jobs you do. But in particular, when you're visible like that. So be sure that everything you're doing meets code, all right? And get it inspected. Now, one quick thing, uh, technically you're supposed to get a permit if you just take a toilet out or a sink out and cap it off. Uh, you need a permit to change a faucet. Now, I was an inspector for seven years. I never got a permit for anything like that, nor would I have expected it, nor as a, as a contractor did I take a permit out for that stuff. All right, we know what the rules are. And, uh, you know, there's not enough inspectors to inspect all these little things like that. If you're going to do a new bathroom and you're going to do more than just swapping out fixtures, which a lot of guys wouldn't get a permit for, where you're going to be uh, doing some piping, venting and drain, moving and, or brand new installation, obviously you need a permit for that. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do now is to take about five minutes of this segment and go right into uh, traps and cleanouts. Okay, so if you've got any questions on those videos, obviously I, I can't talk to you now, but when we go live, uh, save them for that time and we'll talk about it, okay? So what I'd like you to do, and uh, I believe my wife downloaded this, you, you have access to it. Go to chapter 10, eight, 10, semicolon eight. I like chapter eight. And it's called Traps and Cleanouts. Now, she was saying that it doesn't come up on the page, but if you have a book, you should have a book, because one of these days I'm going to just go right to the book. Uh, in fact, let's say next week. I'll expect everybody to have a book. That'll be, what, three weeks since we started, four weeks? Um, or if you go with the computer, you can download the whole thing or access it. It's up to you. But you really should have a book. That was a requirement. Okay, Chapter 10, 8. Traps and cleanouts. Okay, everybody got that? Bottom of the page. Now, what I did is to go at the bottom of that page, right above where it says 10.8. That's a whole new chapter. But again, like the rest of this book, they don't highlight it like a textbook. So, what I did is drew a line across just above where it says traps and cleanouts and used the magic marker, a uh, highlighter, right? Like the ones you used in school in the high school if you used it and uh, highlight traps and cleanouts and then i used it to highlight anything that was important and if i had something that was like really important i'd highlight it and then i'd underline it in red and i kept that to a minimum okay so let's start at the top or actually the bottom of that page fixture traps all right individual plumbing traps shall be sep individual plumbing fixtures shall be separately trapped by a water seal trap placed as close as possible to the fixture outlet Okay, a general rule that we all know. Uh, the only time you might have, I guess you'd call it an exception, if you have like a two-bowl sink, you got one trap. A three-bowl sink, you can have one trap, like a, a commercial sink. But for the most part, that rule applies to everything. One trap, one fixture. And uh, because of that, you can skip the house trap. All right, that's it on that page. Okay, at the top of page 119, what I'm going to do is go over the... What I have highlighted here, uh, there will be some questions if you looked at your assignment for tonight, and this is where, where a lot of it's going to come from. Okay, this is a name that we use mainly for code, not for uh, the trade. Develop length. It's a distance from the fixture outlet, right from the drain of the, of the fixture itself, following a line around the trap up to the crown, the weir of the trap. Okay, the weir of the trap is right where the water, where the trap... Uh, becomes horizontal again okay so if you just measure that including the the uh, trap itself i'm guessing that would be about eight or ten inches it gives you about a foot maybe 14 15 inches before you're you're going to exceed that 24 inch maximum okay it's nice to know normally we wouldn't go any more than that most of our situations uh leave us much closer than 24 inches but 24 is the maximum now if you go over 24 what could happen in theory, the water could pick up enough velocity that it could um, 
siphon the trap out. An example of the best example of a siphon I can think of is a water closet. If you ever have to bail out a water closet, some of you probably know this, you'd get a bucket of water and you throw it in the in the the, uh, the bowl, aim it at the outlet, and the water will siphon most of probably 80% of the water in that bowl will go right out and down. That's a full S trap. That's an illegal trap for any other fixture. Uh, but it's, it's designed in a way that it can siphon itself out. And that's the way you can siphon. So if you get something where uh, it exceeds 24 inches, it could siphon. Now, one time I inspected a job, uh, I had somebody call me and there were carpenters installing the plumbing. And they had a clothes washer on the first floor with a standpipe. So it's probably, what, 36 inches off the floor at least, maybe 40 inches. And it went down. Picture this. The pipe was drilled through the floor. And the P-trap was down near the floor on in the basement. So it had about, oh, maybe at least an 8-foot head of water, right? So my guess is, had that ever been hooked up to operate, that it would have siphoned itself out all the time and it would have been a sewer gas issue up in the house. But before that even happened, um, you know, I, I went and saw the job and uh, had, the, had the whole thing ripped out. The whole the entire house had to be replumbed. It was very bad. That was one example of what I found there. Okay, moving along. A fixture with an integral trap. This is two way, right top of the page, about the fifth line down. Fancy name, not so much a fancy name, but it's a name we don't use. Uh, integral trap means built in. Okay, so if you want to, if you've got your book there, you want to add to that next to where it says integral or integral, you can put uh, built in. And an example would be a water closet, right? They all have like a built in trap. The water goes down, it goes up over a thing called a dam, and then it drops. Now, another one, another rule is uh, letter B, right below that. Some of you might have run into this before. Labs, if it's a, a two-bowl sink, like a kitchen sink, they're always closer than 30 inches from center to center, always. But if you've got a, a bathroom where you got two labs, uh, a double lav vanity, um, and you're within 30 inches center to center, in theory and technically, you could use one trap. I did that a couple of times, and I'll, let me point out a few problems with that. One, that whole trap arm that up to 30 inches long, uh, 20, you know, high 20s, is hanging on that uh, DeSanko, that inch and a quarter by inch and a half DeSanko. And you can tighten that DeSanko all you want, but it's on a very slick chrome piece of pipe, and you have that plastic washer, and what does it want to do? It wants to slide down. So it's kind of hard to get that to stay stay in place. And, but a bigger problem is this, and this happened to me once, and it cured me on doing one, one uh, trap. On the blueprint, I had a vanity, you know, wide open, and I, I did. I did exactly what I just said. I had a single trap with a long, a TY over to uh, pick up the other lav, and it worked fine. It was all legal. It was within 30 inches. But before I came back, um, you know, it was roughed in like that. They they got a vanity with drawers in the middle. Now, I could get at my drum trap, not, excuse me, my P-trap on, on one side, and the other side I could get at the drain, but I, I could not get between them with a pipe. So what I did, excuse me, I had just enough space in the back of the frame. Fortunately, it was a very, it was a very well-to-do customer, so it was a very rugged uh, vanity, and I was able to get a, a piece of inch and a half in back of the frame and I actually beat it with a two by four and a heavy hammer and I sprung the ends on it to get a fitting on, you know, so I could get fittings on. So it kind of went back six inches or so over maybe 20 and back. It might have been a bit over 30, but it was in Rhode Island and they're not too fussy. They're usually not as fussy. So I learned my lesson. I get out of it. Okay. But my advice is if you got two, two laughs, you have two outlets, two traps. Okay. That way you can't get into trouble with uh, a vanity showing up with, uh, with drawers that was not on the print. Also, another thing is uh, they show a, a 48 inch vanity and come uh, finish time and they got what, um, a 54. They, you know, they jump it up a little bit. Uh, you might have a problem with your water closet also, but 
normally we leave enough space that you maybe can get away with that. In any case, um, things change. So just anticipate that they're going to change and put draws there. Okay, moving on. Uh, okay, they mentioned about a dishwasher here that you can hook it up to a, a disposal. They call it a food waste grinder. There is a knockout, or there was, I guess it's still there, on disposals. I think maybe a few times in my life I used that knockout. First of all, when you knock it out, you're probably going to knock it into the disposer itself. You're going to have to reach in and get that. It's a plug about the size of a, a quarter, maybe a little small, maybe like a nickel, a plastic plug, if I remember right. Don't leave it in there. Uh, pull that out. And uh, the problem is everything that comes out of the dishwasher has to go through the disposer. So you're going to be kind of wearing, you know, wearing that out. Uh, it is legal, and I do mention you can do it. Again, it's whatever you want to do. Or I should say whatever your boss wants to do. And then this is a general rule on the fixture, size of the fixture trap. It'll mention it has to be sufficient size. In other words, it's got to be equal to the fixture you're working on. But in no case can that, this is the last line, no trap can be larger than the drainage pipe into which it discharges. It's kind of a no-brainer. You can't put a two-inch two, two inch trap into an inch-and-a-half line. Okay, the bottom of that page is a chart. This chart is called Table 1, Minimum Size of Traps, of uh, Fixture Traps. Okay, I'm going to shut this off and pick you up on the other side here. I don't want to keep this under 20 minutes. See you in a minute.